Hello and welcome to today's lesson on argument of a complex number, part 1. In order not to miss any of my videos, kindly subscribe to the channel and hit on the notification button. So, we go straight into the topic. The argument of a complex number is defined as the angle which a complex number makes with the positive real axis. What do we mean? Now, if we draw our complex plane, you know, this is a positive real axis of the complex number. And this is what our positive imaginary axis. This is our negative real axis. And of course, the negative word, imaginary word, axis. So if we have a complex number, say, at that point, complex number is Z, say Z equal to A plus IB. Then, where R here is the magnitude of the complex number or the modulus of the complex number Z. Then, the argument of this complex number Z is simply the angle that this complex number makes with the positive word, positive word, real axis, theta. So this angle theta is what we refer to as the argument of the complex number Z. So in today's lesson, we want to you know, illustrate or demonstrate how this angle theta, this argument, can be obtained. Actually, what this argument is depends on which quadrant the complex number lies. So we know that this here is a first quadrant, this part here is a second quadrant, here is a third quadrant, and this part here is a fourth quadrant. So we shall now investigate what happens at you know in each of the quadrant as follows. So if we have a complex number z equal to a plus ib, now this complex number falls in the first quadrant. How do we know? This complex number has a as a real part, and the real part here is positive, so it's here, and b, the imaginary part, is also positive, which is here. So the complex number can be located in the first quadrant. So that's the point z with a comma b. So the complex number is nothing but that. So the argument of the complex number then, we had said, is the angle that this complex number makes with the positive what? Real axis. The positive real axis, theta. And that's what, that is the argument of the complex number. So how do we get this argument now? So if we complete this triangle here, what do we get? Now the real part is A, so here is A. And the imaginary part is what? B. So here is B. Of course, this means that here is B. So this other side too is B. So from here, we can get something. And this point here is a right angle triangle. From our elementary trigonometry lessons, we recall our Sokatoa, which says that what? Opposite over adjacent of an angle is what? Is tangent. So we see that from here, we see that the tangent of theta, angle theta, is equal to what? The absolute value of B over A. So the tangent of angle theta is equal to the absolute value of B over A. So that angle theta is equal to what? The tan inverse of what? B over A. Now we introduce this absolute value sign here so that we don't have to deal with negative values, you know, over here. So what do we see? We see that if the complex number Z equal to A plus IB is located in the first quadrant of our argon plane, of our complex plane, then the argument of the complex number is nothing but what? The tan inverse or the arc tan of the absolute value of B over A. Where B here is the value of the imaginary part and A is the value of what? Of the real part of the complex number. We now proceed to, to see what happens in, in the second quadrant. So we will consider the, com the complex number Z equal to negative A plus IB. This complex number, of course, is located in the second quadrant because for the second quadrant, the real part is negative and the imaginary part is positive. And that's what we have here. So the complex number Z can be located at that point. So Z, this is the origin. So that's the complex number Z. So just like we did before, what is the, the argument? The argument is the angle that the complex number makes with the positive what? With the positive real axis, theta. Now, to get this argument, we first of all try to get what this angle here is. Let us call that angle, angle A. So, once again, if we complete 
this triangle here, we have that what? Our real part here is negative A, and the imaginary part here is what? Is B. So, what to be the tangent of angle A? So, the tangent of angle A, so we have here tan angle A, is equal to what? Is equal to opposite over adjacent. So, in absolute value, that is just B over A. So, that A is equal to what? The tan inverse of B over A. Now, mind you, A is not the argument of the complex number Z we are looking for. The argument is what? Is theta, angle theta. But angle A and theta have a relationship. How? The sum of these two angles gives us what? 180 what? Degrees. Because there are some, because there are angles on a straight line. So we are saying that angle A plus angle theta is what? 180 degrees. In radian, 180 degrees simply means what? Pi. Therefore, we are saying that angle A plus angle theta is pi. Now, angle A plus theta is pi. So what is angle theta now? Angle theta is nothing but what? Pi minus angle A. So what does this mean? It means that if the complex number is located in the second quadrant of our complex plane, then the argument of that complex number theta is nothing but what? Pi minus the argument of the of what? Minus the, minus the angle, minus the acute angle here, A, given to us. So what happens in the third quadrant? We check. In the third quadrant, the complex number has negative real part as well as negative what imaginary part, negative real and negative imaginary part, so that the complex number is just this. So we have here so z. So what again? Our argument theta is the angle the complex number makes with the positive what real axis. But this time, in the third quadrant, our argument is drawn in the clockwise direction. So angle here theta. That's the argument theta. So once again, to get angle theta, we want to first of all know what this acute angle here A is. So A. So the real part here is negative, so negative A. And the minor part here is negative. So this negative B also. So we proceed. So tan A gives us what? So the tangent of angle A again gives us what? Absolute value of what? Opposite over adjacent. B over A. So that A is equal to the tan inverse of B over A. Now recall again that the sum of angle A and angle theta gives us 180 degrees, which is equal to pi. So recall again that angle A plus angle theta gives us what? Gives us pi, which is 180. So that angle theta, our argument, is equal to what? Pi minus A. But recall that for the angle in the third quadrant, we have transversed theta in the clockwise direction. And from our trigonometry, once an angle is transversed in the clockwise direction, that angle must be what? Negative. So this angle theta must be negative. So we have here negative pi minus a. So if we open up this bracket, what do we get? We get that minus pi is minus pi plus what? A equal to a minus what? Pi. So, what we're seeing here is this. If the, the complex number is located in the third quadrant of a complex plane, then the argument of the complex number is nothing but what? The acute angle here minus what? Pi. Now for the fourth quadrant, for the fourth quadrant, our complex number has positive real axis, real part, and negative what? Imaginary part. So positive real part and negative imaginary part. So the complex number is nothing but this. So once again, the argument of the complex number is the angle it makes with the positive real axis. So this angle here, angle theta, for the fourth quadrant, theta. So we can find theta. So if we complete once again this triangle here, what do we have? Now the real part is A, the real part is A, and the imaginary part is negative B, is minus B. So the tangent of theta is what? So tan theta is equal to what? Opposite B over what? Adjacent A. So that theta is equal to what? The tan inverse of what? B over A. But recall again that for the fourth, for the fourth quadrant, we also transverse you know, in the clockwise direction. So theta 
will have to be what negative what tan inverse of b over a and that is how we get the argument of complex numbers you know depending on the quadrant in which our complex number is located now in our next video we shall take examples to illustrate how this is done